What's up Average Dad fans, welcome back to another video and today it's all about this. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra. I've had this device for over a week now, I've been using it as my daily driver. I have some thoughts, but as you know, the Average Dad review is scored in 5 categories. Build quality, design, software, cameras and price. Now obviously along the way we'll discuss the pros, the cons, the battery life, the performance and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go. Now before I get into the categories, I quickly just want to shout out 2024. This has been, without doubt, the best start to the year for a smartphone geek like myself. The Oppo Find X7 Ultra, the Z60 Ultra from Nubia, an absolute dark horse, the S24 Ultra, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. If you are in the Android candy bar style phone market, you have absolutely been spoiled. And I've been lucky enough to use them all, so again, I will give you my open and honest opinion about the 14 Ultra. First category, build quality. Straight away, when you pick up the phone, feel it in your hand, just premium exudes from every vegan leather fibre on this phone. Yes. It's 220 grams, so quite beefy, but nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to a flagship phone. It's 6.73 inches as far as the 120 hertz display, which again is just beautiful as far as resolution and sharpness and colours. Everything is fantastic. One thing the display doesn't have is Gorilla Glass Victus, but it does have Xiaomi's own shield can't remember what they're calling it just now. I'll put a little asterisk up here. But it's got glass protection. And as an added bonus, like most Chinese smartphones, it does come with a pre-installed screen protector. The phone is IP68 water and dust resistant. As mentioned, you can go for a vegan leather back or a ceramic. There is even a special edition titanium available. So lots of choices out there. So pick whatever takes your fancy. The rails on the vegan leather and ceramic versions are aluminium. However, on the titanium, you're going to get titanium rails. So overall, build quality is top notch. I have had zero issues with my device. And this review is based on my experience. Now, I do know that some people, quite a few people, have had issues with lens fog. Yes, condensation getting in that massive rear lens and it's been causing issues. I also know that Xiaomi will replace those devices free of charge with no issues, but that doesn't take away from the fact that clearly build quality on some devices isn't quite up to scratch. Now, to be clear, I don't judge Xiaomi on this. When you're mass producing a phone and it's getting shipped all over the world, I actually praise Xiaomi for releasing this globally because not all Chinese brands do like the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. So I don't want to slam them too much, but if there wasn't a lens fog issue that I had known about, then the score might have been half a point higher. But because I know that exists and I have to take that into account, I'm going to score build quality a 3.5 out of 5 for the Xiaomi. Again, lots of options but some people are having issues. The other thing I want to point out, and I've mentioned this in our video, is the rattle. To be clear, the rattle has nothing to do with build quality. That is just the optical image stabilization in the cameras. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the more the rattle, the better the camera system. 
And now we move on to one of the most subjective rounds that exist, design. Who am I to tell you what a good design looks like? I'm not. I can only give you my opinion as far as what I like. And I think viewers of the channel already know that the Xiaomi was going to be pretty high up as far as design because it's got the large circular camera centered on the back. It comes with options as far as materials, including vegan leather. I love a vegan leather back. Now, does vegan leather pick up little microfibers and get a bit annoyingly dusty? Absolutely. Is ceramic or even glass cleaner? Yes. But with ceramic and glass, you generally get a lot of fingerprints. Nothing like that with vegan leather. Now, my black variant comes with all black rails. I particularly love the stealth-like, classier look. Although, I am partial to a bright colour like my Orange S24 Ultra. On this occasion, because I treat this more like a proper photo and video camera, I like the black design. Now, ergonomically, it's been designed great in my opinion. It's not too squared off like an iPhone. It's not too curved like the Oppo X7 Ultra. It's got a fine balance, kind of like the S24 Ultra, but even then, still not as quite drastically squared off. And it's not a fully flat display like the S24 Ultra or iPhone. It's got tiny little curves. Again, not as aggressive screen curves on the X7 Ultra. Somewhere in the middle. And I personally really like the look of this phone from front to back. Now, the best designed phone for me so far, and I believe I gave it 5 out of 5, was the Oppo X7 Ultra. In that two-tone gunmetal grey with the black vegan leather and the stitching down the middle, I don't know if anybody can do any better. I think that might be, for me, the pinnacle with that huge camera in the centre of the rear. Now, while the Xiaomi is pretty much there, it's not two-tone, it doesn't have the stitching, so I have to take that into consideration. So, the design category, I am giving the Xiaomi a 4 out of 5. But, for the first time ever, I do want to shout out the photography kit case slash orange ring that comes with the photography kit. I don't know what it is, but with that orange ring and the case, it just gives the phone a whole new personality. A more appealing and kind of in-your-face look. Now again, I said about the design that I like the stealthness and the classiness, but when you can add that orange ring through the photography kit, again, it just shows off a bit of personality. So... With the case and the orange ring, I would actually give the phone 4.5 out of design. I would actually give the phone 4.5 out of 5 for the design category. But I have to stay consistent and it wouldn't be fair to me to essentially get a case on all the other phones that could potentially enhance the design. It's all about the phone. So for design, we're sticking with 4 out of 5. Now the next category is build as software and I have to keep it that way for at least the rest of 2024 because I'll get shot down if I change the scoring categories uh, halfway through a year. But software includes internals, performance and battery because the battery's inside the phone, internals. Go with me here. So from a strictly software point of view, the Hyper OS Android skin is great. It's not jaw-dropping, but it's also not troublesome. It's just somewhere in that fine to great. So for that alone, it would be like a 3 out of 5. But we then have to factor in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, the 5000 mAh battery, the performance, the active cooling that the Xiaomi has that has been shown over and over again to deliver sustained performance, better than the S24 Ultra. Yes, I'll take a second to highlight that there was some examples, really just one in particular, but there's such a big reviewer it, it spread like wildfire, where on the 3D wildlife benchmarking, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra crashed. Two things. This was a review, review unit, pre-retail release. This was pre-software update. 
I have never had an issue with my phone crashing during gaming or any high performance like when it transferred all the files over when I first set up the phone or with all the 8K, 4K video I've been shooting over the past week or so. So for me, no issues as far as crashing or throttling. And I believe if you all go back to that YouTube reviewers page and ask them to do the test again, well, one, they won't have the phone because it was a freebie and I'm sure they've given it away. But two, it won't crash again. Now, if we just stick with battery for a while, there's a 90 watt charger included in the box. That gets a little star from me. This will charge the phone wired from dead to 100% in a little under 30 minutes. There is also 80 watts wireless charging. Now granted, I don't have an 80 watts wireless charger and I almost guarantee that you don't either. But your 50 watt, 40 watt, whatever charge you've got, you, at least you know that it's going to get that full capacity. The 80 watts will only work with Xiaomi's own proprietary charger, which I can't seem to find. And as you'll all be aware, I am not the world's biggest gamer. I have been playing Moonlight Blade recently. They were a channel sponsor a while ago, but I genuinely do like the game. I'm not an intense gamer. However, if I was an intense gamer, there's a particular chair that I would use. Yes, when I find myself able to sneak in a long gaming session, I've been using the FlexiSpot XL3 electric riser recliner. Now this chair is just mind-blowing. It's got massage function, as mentioned it obviously reclines and helps you up off your backside if you're not able to. Now the advanced massage settings come with four custom parts along with five vibration modes. And to top it off, there's even lumbar heating included. Yes, you can turn on the lumbar heating to elevate your massage into a truly relaxing experience. Now, as far as the price, just mind-blowing. £249. Yes, you heard me correctly. £249.99 if you go to the FlexiPot website. However, make sure to click on the link in my description where you'll get a further 8% off. So a massive shout out to FlexiSpot. I look forward to working with you again. Let's go on with the review. Now getting back to the software features that the Xiaomi has, with this being a global ROM device, you're getting your Android Auto, you're getting your NFC Google Pay, you're getting everything you'll get from your Samsung device. But with the Xiaomi, they don't have Samsung DeX, but they have their own version. They don't have the ecosystem that Samsung have globally. However, they do have their own products. They have a Xiaomi watch, they have a Xiaomi pad. There's a few things out there that you could buy and immerse yourself in that world. They've got a Xiaomi laptop. They're even bringing out a Xiaomi car, which trumps everyone, including you, Apple. But I know, standing here in Scotland, I might be the only one with a Xiaomi 14 Ultra within five miles of here. Whereas... How many Samsungs do you think are within five miles of here? Or iPhones that I'm using to shoot this video? Xiaomi just don't have that reach. So again, shout out to them for releasing this globally. The sales will not break any records, but they're trying. And us as tech fans have to appreciate that. We also have to appreciate that they're trying with software. They're trying to get that display out, mirroring your phone on your tablet quick sharing files through their own kind of airdrop type system. The issue they've got coming up against is just demand. Nobody's really asking for it. So with all that being said, from the fantastic battery life and performance and the software being really good in my opinion, while not one UI, it's still a really good software skin. I'm going to score the software internals and performance a four out of five for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Now, the penultimate category and most likely the one that you actually care about. When a company releases a phone that looks like this, the camera damn sure better work. And I get so many comments saying, oh my God, that camera's got a phone attached to it. And you're right. 
and particularly with the pho photography kit that you can see here, this is a photographer and videographer's absolute dream. The convenience this phone offers and versatility is unmatched. I don't know of a first party proprietary photography kit that exists for Apple or Samsung or Oppo. Show me you're trying, and again, shout out to them, new things. And the photography kit came with the phone, and we'll talk about that in price. So it's not like they're forcing you to go and buy it separately. You had like a whole month to order the 14 Ultra and receive the photography kit for free, so yeah. Now, as far as the actual camera setup, this is an Ultra phone, and for me, an Ultra phone should have quad rear lenses. Four 50 megapixel lenses, four of the biggest sensors, in fact, the biggest sensors on any smartphone, and that's lens for lens. So when you look at the wide 50 megapixel, this is the largest one inch type sensor on any smartphone. Ultra wide, the largest sensor for ultra wide on any smartphone. 3.2 times telephoto, you know where I'm going with this, and the five times telephoto. It's the largest sensor on any smartphone for an optical five time zoom lens. Every single one is superior. Every single one brings in the most light through the aperture. It's just mind blowing that all this fits in here. And again, with the optical image stabilization, you get a rattle, but don't worry about it. Now, as far as video recording, sometimes Chinese smartphones can neglect particularly the front facing camera or 120 frames per second doesn't seem to be a thing. Well, the Xiaomi stomps all over that. It's 4K 30 and 4K 60 on the selfie camera. The main can go 8K 24 or 8K 30 frames per second. All lenses can also shoot 4K 30, 4K 60 and 4K 120 frames per second. I love the versatility this gives you. 120 frames per second just means you can really smoothly slow clips down and edit without losing any of that quality. So for the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to give you some samples with my experience, daytime, nighttime, videos, all that good stuff. So enjoy. <laughs>
So hopefully we can all agree that these are some of the best photos and videos you've hopefully ever seen from a smartphone device. Now, am I saying that it's the best around for all photos and videos? No. I firmly believe that in a lot of situations, the portrait mode is better on the S24 Ultra, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and the Vivo X100 Pro. I also think that in zoom, max zoom, the Oppo X7 Ultra probably does a better job. Now that comes down to processing, AI, show me clearly, you know, they could work on that through software updates, but as it stands right now, to me, in some scenarios, they're not making the most of the massive hardware advantages they've got over the other smartphones. The processing sometimes is letting them down. However, 99 times out of 100, you're going to get an immaculate photo or video. The score I have given the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, and again, this is as honest as I can be, I could be carried away, I could let my recency bias overtake, but I won't. I will give the Xiaomi 14 Ultra 4.5 out of 5. And now we move into the final category award, and I've talked about this before, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is not cheap. It's an expensive device, and for that reason alone, spoiler, I can't give a thousand pound plus device five out of five. I just can't do it. Unless it's a foldable phone, I guess. You know, there are some foldable phones that warrant a thousand pound plus price tag. But for candy bar phones, they've only got a single display. They don't have to buy a hinge. I can't ever see a situation where any candy bar style phone should be over a thousand pounds. The only way we've got there is because of demand and people are paying it. So obviously Apple and Samsung and Xiaomi and others are going to charge it. To give you an idea, a candy bar phone is about 20 to 30% the cost of a foldable phone. So in that vein, for, for the manufacturer, not for us obviously, but I mean manufacturing R&D costs. So in that vein, the candy bar phone for the consumer should be, you know, at least half the price of a foldable. And it's just not. The Xiaomi Mix Fold 3, which is the flagship foldable that Xiaomi do, you can pick up for around 13 or 1400 pounds, maybe less just now if you import. That's only like 100 pounds more expensive than the candy bar 14 Ultra. And yes, I know what you're thinking, but the cameras are better and it's the biggest light. Yeah, but trust me, all that added together, the price doesn't come close to how much it costs for the Mix Fold 3. So I would like to see a manufacturer like Xiaomi to boost sales globally. Can you honestly sit there and say that if this phone was £999 with the photography kit included, that you wouldn't snap it up? I think you would. I think they're missing a trick. So that's what I'd like to see from Xiaomi. Now, the reality we live in, Samsung, Apple, flagship phones are a thousand pound plus. So based in that reality, what Xiaomi done to make that price a bit easier for you is include the 180 pound photography kit, include the 400 pound Xiaomi Pad 6. Now granted, you can't go and sell them for that price, but even if you sell them for half the price that they're available for. That's still a few hundred pounds that you could technically take off the cost of the device, bringing it under that thousand pounds. So with all that being said, retail price is 1300 pounds. By the end of March into the beginning of April, those deals are going to be gone. So can I recommend this device without any gifts for 1300 pounds? Not to most people. But that's no different to the S24 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the same storage variants. I would never recommend you go out and buy them standalone without getting some form of incentives or discounts from somewhere. So again, I can't give it 5 out of 5. With them including free gifts, I have to shout them up. I believe I gave Samsung a 3.5 out of 5. I need to check. I'll fact check and let you know. I think I gave Samsung a three and a half out of five because they did include 
the watch and a couple of other little free gifts like screen protectors and a case. So because Xiaomi have included two free gifts that value way more than what Samsung did, I am going to give the Xiaomi a 4 out of 5 for price. With the caveat that it should be cheaper. So if my maths is correct, and I'll need to look back on this video, I really should have written these down, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra scores a very respectable 19 out of 25. And again, I'll put a little asterisk here with the actual score if I'm wrong, but I'm sure it's 19 out of 25. Ultimately, it's a fantastic device that scores well in all categories. Some categories it smashes, build quality and software it, it could improve upon. The Oppo X7 Ultra and the S24 Ultra are still my two leading smartphones with the Xiaomi now fitting into third place. And the proof is kind of in the pudding. Now that my review is done, and again, I love this device, from a day-to-day -day perspective, I actually find my SIM card back in the S24 Ultra. I know there's going to be a lot of shock and awe in the comments and you're going to lambast me, but hear me out. Ease of use on the S24 Ultra, for me, it's a slightly larger and wider screen. I love the circle to search feature that is included on the S24 Ultra. And there's a couple of other accessibility things and I've got a Samsung tablet, the connectivity it gives me that and the quick sharing. There's a few things that I just can't do without from my Android device. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Again, the 14 Ultra gets my stamp of approval. If you're looking for an Android phone, just make sure you get some deals with your purchase. If you've got any questions about the device, let me know in the comments. However, I'm aware that one of the questions will be, is this for sale? No, the device is sold already. Yes, one of my subscribers has already purchased the 14 Ultra from me. So that will be getting shipped to the States in the next couple of days. So no, you don't need to ask me. It is not for sale. If you enjoyed this video, please smash like. I love making these longer term reviews. Hopefully you've finished your iron brew and shortbread by now. And if you want to see more content like this with the upcoming Vivo X Fold 3 series, please smash subscribe. And until next time,